Reverend Adolf Davis will address us. Well, there's a nice verse in the Bible that says, Be not weary. Oh, I didn't know there was another part. Thank you very much, Bishop Ferdinand. Permit me to accept the protocol of accepting the protocol that was already established and to thank you for the invitation to be a part of this very important conversation. Um, it is, as I'm sure you can appreciate, a major move that we are making in St. Vincent. Some people refer to it with good reason, though it may not be a good analogy of our new, being our new banana. It is, it is a big thing, it is a big thing. Uh, so let me start by stating the obvious. I'm not a politician and I have no desire to be such. If I could go a little further, uh, that might be complicated in, in a way. I'm not a politician who is a Christian nor a Christian who is a politician. The challenge of the politicians are, is a little different and perhaps in some ways a little more complex than, than the challenge I have. And um, sitting on the select committee in some way by default, um, because the person who would have been there at the beginning was not in the country, so I was asked to sit on the committee. And I want to commend Mr. Caesar. He chairs the select committee, and I think he really does a good job as he tries to navigate the variety of very complex issues. Some of you may know that as a church collective, uh, which included the Association of Evangelical Churches, of which the Testament Church of God is a part, we issued a statement, I think it was earlier this year in February, and one of the prevailing things we said was we really need to have something like a concept document which outlines with some detail the way forward so we can have uh, an engagement on how we proceed. Um, the, the next step was draft legislation. Now, while we are part of the select committee which reviews the legislation, um, what for us seemed obvious was the draft legislation was we are going ahead and this is the framework within which we are going ahead. And so our approach as a church was, look, if we are going ahead, we still as a church have a contribution to make to the process. We may not agree with how we are going ahead or even if we should go ahead, but the fact that we are going ahead as church, we can say, well, we make me like how things go and withdraw. And so we have tried to be responsibly a part of that process. We have only recently on Monday issued a second statement which attempts to add to the conversation and raises, I suspect, if you haven't seen it as yet, it is available. I um, can certainly email your copy. It is also, um, I think, Searchlight may be brought in. Um, but it raises a lot of questions, and the, attempt, the intention is for not just the council leaders and church heads to have a discussion on this and to ask the questions, but to add the questions to the national conversation. So look, these are some questions. If you have answered them already, then it is good to make sure you reiterate what the answers are. If you haven't answered those questions, they are important questions for us to consider. I understand that part of our role as a church is in a sense to be a watchman. And one of the, one of the things, my understanding of our role in not just this, but in national policy and so forth is that we bring a perspective 
to the discourse that sometimes and perhaps often times will be a little different. And so even in this, not everybody, you hear a number of persons are a number of persons are motivated by the idea that they got plenty of money in this. Our approach as, as church is not going to be, well, they got plenty of money in this. We ask questions about you know the human impact and the human element. Um, so let me just there's, there, as I reflected on how to proceed today, there are several approaches uh, because there's so many dynamics involved. But I want to take this approach. First, separate the issues, reiterate some of what was said. There, there is the issue of medical marijuana or marijuana for medical purposes. Um, I doubt there are too many persons who know today will deny that marijuana has medicinal value and properties. Um, whether you go back to the old time days people were using it or whether it is the Gupta kind of a story. Um, the research and the experience of people I think has sufficient and been sufficient to conclude that there are medical and medicinal values and prop value in marijuana. So that's not the debate. I, I don't know. I don't know that that is the debate. Um, however, just a little caution. Um, some people present marijuana as the new wonder drug. And one of the things I have said is, look, um, and the statement also was reflected is, we are also mindful that the research is continuing to evolve and develop with marijuana. So just as much as we are going to more than likely learn increased value and benefits, it is also possible that as the research increases, we are going to hear also increased concerns and caution. So I'm just saying we have to be mature uh, about the, the, the conversation. So there is medical marijuana, marijuana for medical purposes. And I don't think that is the debate or that is the issue of concern. There is not just no medical marijuana, but there is a medical marijuana industry. But there are two different things. So there is the fact that marijuana can be used for medicinal purposes. And there is the creating an industry for access to marijuana for medical purposes. So, which involves, well, we'll come to that. St. Vincent is not just looking at making marijuana available for medical purposes. It is looking at establishing a medical marijuana industry. So there's significant different issues. Now this is also different, and I'm reiterating because sometimes people think we don't understand the issues. This is different from marijuana for recreational use. In other words, people just taking it to smoke because I have the right to smoke what I want and I want a high. And so it is not marijuana for recreational use. It is not even yet decriminalization, which is not locking up people for possession of marijuana. That's not the conversation at this time. The issue is a medical marijuana industry. And a partner issue, which you have heard, is religious access, access to marijuana for religious use. So, on the one hand, we do have the medical marijuana industry, but parallel to that is accessing marijuana for religious use. So, the issue for us is significantly marijuana industry in St. Vincent. So, I hope those kind of help to separate some issues. In the simplest form, what this means is the real possibility of having several hundreds or a couple thousand acres of land which are with marijuana farm of marijuana farms. 
And those lands are by and large going to be um, lower level, low ground. So you know most of the current cultivation takes place in the hills, so you have issues of deforestation and all of that. The farms are going to be, for want of a sense of location, nearer to residential areas in, in relative to being up in the hills, so there are going to be farms that are nearer to residential areas. So that you're also going to have the possibility of factories, um, companies, etc., who are processing the farm product in order to create oils and other byproducts. So in the one sense, the picture is we are going to have marijuana farms, several hundreds or thousands of acres of marijuana farms, and along with that, you're going to have factories that are taking the product, the weed, and processing it into other things. That's a very simple presentation. And along with that, is that you're going to have an export industry where you're going to some of the stuff you get and so forth and you may process them and then you export. Now, the principle on the other line of concern therefore is, so on the one hand, we are seeking to establish a marijuana industry which involves having farms and factories. On the other side of the conversation, is a Vincentian experience and I like to locate it in our Vincentian experience because America's experience may be different, Canada's research may be different, I like to locate it to what we know and experience. Irresponsible marijuana use has serious adverse consequences. That's our Vincentian experience. So we have seen People we know right in our own village, on our own blocks, young men who whether by marijuana use alone or by marijuana use and then on to other drugs or by Zuki mix of thing. We know in St. Vincent that many of our young men have gotten messed up by marijuana use. So when you say marijuana in St. Vincent, one of the reasons people have a negative response to it is not because, simply because um, there are, were some big guns who sat down and said marijuana is bad. It is because in our own villages, homes and communities, we have seen, you know, Minister Sobota talk about those trafficking, but we have seen young men especially whose lives have been destroyed by the use and abuse of marijuana. So that's our experience. So in fact, in the statement, one of the things we said, while the science says marijuana is not a gateway drug, I said, if you check the statement, if you check our experience and you interview a hundred young men who are on hard drugs, using hard drugs. In St. Vincent, our experience has been at least, that's our observation or understanding. Most of our young men using hard drugs, their introduction to a psychoactive feeling and a high and so forth came from the weed. Now, that is our experience. It might not be the, the most comprehensive um, analysis of the thing, but that's what we know in St. Vincent. And so as a result, when you say weed, Vincentians immediately have a disquiet about it. And so when you speak of medical marijuana, people are a little more open, but once you say marijuana because of our experiences. Now, access to drugs, access create is a major issue Access is a major issue in drug abuse. Are you with me? We're together. 
Now, there are those who argue, oh, look at what prohibition was doing with alcohol and so forth. Now, I was not wrong with no prohibition story and so forth. But I know, and you know, what access to rum is doing in St. Vincent. That we have, even, you know, even though young people are not supposed to get rum, it's illegal. You check into school sports and those things there. Eh? And the amount of alcohol our young people are using. Alcohol has become the kind of thing that our people, young and old alike, will actually say because access. Boy, I get a job this week in here. And so we see how access to rum is having a significant impact on the well-being of our people. Therefore, we have to now ask the question because increased access, the theory, the principle, increased access to marijuana can accentuate the problem of mental health issues in St. Vincent, can, but we also know that another experience, reality in St. Vincent, that a lot of our young men who are in crime have a story of marijuana use. Now, you could flip it however you want. I'm just saying these are our real observations. And the point we're making is there are sufficiently cogent and serious observations for us to seriously analyze them and figure out how we are going to deal with those realities. Because whether we know it or not, whether we, whether we like it or not, and however we want to twist it or turn it. You're going to prison and you ask, you know, and it might just be a, a random unscientific thing, but you ask, how many of them fellas in jail have smoked or smoking weed? The fact that a vast majority of them smoke weed. When you ask how many young fellas who are involved in one crime or the other smoke weed, the fact that a vast majority of them smoke weed, we can't dismiss it and say, well, it's not just the weed, it's a social circumstance and all of that. Yes, I don't deny it, but the fact that weed is in the narrative means we need to say, let me pay careful attention to this. So the issue is, on the one hand, an industry, and on the other hand, an experience where weed has been a part of our narrative of mental health issues for our young people, as young men especially, and crime. Therefore, we have to ask the question, will the industry in St. Vincent translate to increased access to marijuana? Because if the industry translates to increased access, and if marijuana contributes to a young men in crime and mental health issues, then increased access compounds these problems. Are you following me, the reasoning? So we therefore, in asking the access question, we therefore now have to look beyond the question of systems, but also ask questions about our own Vincentian experience with systems. Are you following that? Now, for people like myself who have sat on the committee, it is a highly regulated committee. Highly, not regulated committee, sorry, industry. Highly regulated industry. And part of that is because there are international conventions that we have to make sure we satisfy so that we don't get ourselves run afoul with them and so forth. So it's a highly regulated industry. And part of the regulating of the industry so rigidly is to try and limit increased access, or they call that diversion. The legitimate being used illegitimately. Now, so you have, in principle, a highly regulated industry. We now have to ask, 
in practice will St. Vincent be able to sufficiently execute a highly regulated industry so that industry doesn't translate to increased access. Now those are questions we have to be honest about because those are they are the realities of our experience and we may have to ask questions like how effectively have we managed less regulated enterprise because the question is if we have man not managed less regulated enterprise well how are we going to ensure we manage a highly regulated enterprise because whether you like it or not by and large, it's the same people, the essential people, who will be involved, who have been involved in managing other things, will be involved in managing this. So, I said to somebody, I said, look, our cultural strength is also our cultural weakness as a Caribbean people. In the sense that one of the things that people love about Caribbean people is that we are fairly relaxed. So, you know, you go to England and someone in place, then everybody, nobody is studying you. By and large, Vincentians are walking through the street, they're shouting everybody, and that is the good about us. The bad is sometimes we carry that attitude into the workplace. Are you with me? That's our reality. How are we going to ensure that our our, the, the, the fact that often we carry that attitude into the workplace that the marijuana industry doesn't become a victim of the lack of due diligence that will be required by the persons involved in the process. No, I'm not saying, get me right, I'm not saying it is not possible. I'm saying these are questions we need to ensure we properly ventilate, otherwise we go find ourselves in a predicament. Let me go further. Um, I was checking, checking the time. Then you have what I will call bigger picture issues, like the long-term viability of the industry. So maybe you could say, well, all right, if we could make a couple of million dollars next year and the year after, and then after that the industry crash, no problem. But if that is the long-term reality, you still have to ask the next question. So if two years down the line, we make uh, 800 billion, I think one, one figure, if I remember the figure, Colorado one year was some big 100 million thing. If we make 800 million, two years down the line, and the industry, the medical marijuana industry collapses, what does that mean for the marijuana culture of St. Vincent? Having been involved in the last two years in a marijuana industry. Are you following the kind of question we are asking? Further to that, there are many people with good reason who say either that medical marijuana industry is not going to be a long-term profitability industry or that the real money is not in medical marijuana in the long term but in recreational marijuana so if that is true you hear my question if that is true and since very often some of our engagements are governed by profitability making of money how at this stage do we ensure that we are not just starting with medical marijuana but when and if medical marijuana industry is not as viable we are forced because we're looking to make money to translate that and transfer to recreational use again i'm saying they are just in what i think to be important questions we need to consider because we're not just trying to do for now we have to think about what happens for the years to come so 
In fact, anyway. Last point. I think we have already gotten a little sign. And I, I say this carefully because for the policymakers and others, you cannot you cannot not do something simply because there's a potential that things could fall out. But at the same time, we have to consider very deliberately the potential of all. But look at what has already happened. As we have now discussed an industry for medical purposes. So the door crack open a little bit. Rasta man say, oh, we, we gotta get we gotta get space to make sure we could use the hall for sacramental purposes as well. And further to that, Rastas are also now asking for more. They're asking for, I gather I haven't seen the document and well the extent to which it is so, but what I've heard is that they, they are, they're asking for apology and then um, are looking at, I hear they're looking at even issues of, let me call it reparation. And then now, because hear me well, the, the religious use is also highly regulated. But the Rastas are now pushing back because they say, so wait, you mean I and I can smoke my herb whenever I want to get my own high and so forth, so it's only in a tabernacle? So they know some of them are feeling that the system is oppressing them. So, the, and, and again, brothers and sisters, what we are saying here, as a church, we have to deliberately take the kind of watchman pros, um, posture. And I like how God speaks of Ezekiel as being a watchman, saying, you got to try to see far. Amen. And when you look beyond, if you see danger, they might vex with you. But you have a responsibility to say, hey, there's a possibility of danger. Let me make sure we prepare ourselves and seek to mitigate against it. And so all we're doing is asking what we consider to be important questions. And I think that's basically our posture. Again, let me clarify. There, we, there's no, at least for me, there is no issue with the fact that marijuana has medical benefits. The issue we are trying to work through is an industry in St. Vincent for medical marijuana. And, and I think, uh, yeah, the Minister Caesar said earlier, there's, 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 there's need for the dialogue, people to, be, to feel free to ask the questions and raise the questions. And in fact, that's what we have been asking for a long time. But we also know that there is an anxiety to press ahead because you have to try and get the early advantage. Because, and again, as church, these are the kind of things we have to, our way of looking at things will be different. Because for me, the fact that other people might jump ahead of us is not reason for us to jump forward. Are you with me? For me, as a Christian, these issues we have to ask and seriously, respectfully, sufficiently address that even if everybody else jump ahead and make money that we could say, boy, because of our concern for the well-being, not just the health but health and well-being of our people we asked, we pondered, it looked like we waste time because you have people who say, boy, the government, they wasting time, they should have done legalize the whole thing which I, to be honest, very frank, I think is utter ignorance and stupidity. And I'll say it because it's important to feel that in St. Vincent was just legalize marijuana, free up the weed, recreational and all of it. Um, so I know there are those who are asking for that. But even in what is being pursued, there are still important questions to properly answer. Thank you very much.